I was reading about Socrates today, and I was reading about Socrates' trial. You know, he was tried by the Athenians for corrupting, for, for failing to worship the correct gods and corrupting the youth of Athens by, like, teaching them stuff and asking them questions, you know, which is a great way to corrupt people. And um, so he knew the trial was coming. And Athens wasn't a very big place, it only had about 25,000 people, everybody knew everybody, and everybody knew who the powerful guys were, and everybody, including Socrates, knew that the trial was a warning to, like, get out of town, right? So we're going to put you on trial in six months, and the potential penalty is death. Got that? It's like... <laughs> so, so Socrates had a chat with his compatriots, and they were contemplating fair means and foul to set up a defense for him so that he could, or to leave, so that he could not be tried and put to death. And uh, he decided that he wasn't going to do that. And he also decided that he wasn't going to even think about his defense. And he said why, and this is quite an interesting thing. He said why, he told one of his friends that he had this voice in his head a daemon, a spirit, something like that, um, that he always listened to, and that that was one of the reasons he was different from other people, because he always listened to this thing. It didn't tell him what to do, but it told him what not to do. It always told him what not to do. And if it told him not to do something, then he didn't do it. If he was speaking, and the little voice came up and said, no, then he shut up, and he tried to say something else. And he was very emphatic about this, and he said that when he tried to plan to evade the trial, or even to mount his own defense, the voice came up and said, no, don't bother with it. And he thought, well, what, what, do you, what the hell do you mean by that? Like, <laughs> there's a trial coming and I'm going to be put to death. And, well, he eventually concluded that he was an old guy. You know, the next 10 years, he was in his 70s, perhaps. The next 10 years weren't going to be that great for him. He got a chance, maybe the gods were giving him a chance just to bow out, you know, to put his affairs in order, to say goodbye to everyone, to avoid that last descent into catastrophe, which might have been particularly painful for a philosopher, and to, and to walk off the world on his own terms, something like that. The point I'm making with that is that Socrates attended to this internal voice that at least told him what not to do, and then he didn't do it. And of course, Socrates was a very remarkable man, and we still hear about him today, and we know that he existed, and all of those things.